Welcome everyone. <clears throat> Happy Wednesday and thank you for um for joining us. I hope you all managed to have as good an Easter as possible in our new world and that the Easter Bunny found you in lockdown. Um, thank you for joining us today for our second webinar. As you're aware, we're having these at, at 12.30 every Wednesday. I must admit I'm beginning to look forward to Wednesdays now because it's the only day I actually um, take my hoodie off and I even put jewellery on today, which is the first time in about a month. So I feel honoured on Wednesdays that I can actually get dressed properly. Um, I don't know how many of you, uh, I think some familiar names who were on the webinar with us last week as well. So that was a great start. And I hope you enjoyed that, a very important topic of mental health and wellbeing. An equally important and very relevant topic for today, and that is all things insurance. Um, and this topic came up with the feedback from quite a few of you after last week's webinar, suggesting that you'd really like to hear about some insurance um, aspects and components in this new world that we find ourselves in. And so thank you to those people who suggested that and for also sending through your questions, which Sarah will go through today. Um, so before I hand over to Sarah Dowds from Marsh Insurance, who'll go through a, a presentation. If you have any specific questions, please just send them through via the chat function on this meeting or preferably email them through to club support at gymnastics.org.au after the session and we'll answer them in our weekly email uh, this Friday evening. But if we have time at the end of today's session after Sarah's finished, we can certainly take some questions via chat because um, I'm sure a question that you have, a lot of other people on the, the webinar will also be interested in, in hearing about. So really appreciate your time, Sarah Dowds from Marsh Insurance joining us today and I'll hand over to you now. Thank you. Thank you, Kitty. Thanks everyone. Um, I'm really glad to be able to be here today to, to go through what is some really interesting questions and challenging times that we're all having at the moment. So um, I'm going to attempt to share my screen without Hopefully, just give me a moment while I work this out. Now, hopefully, you can see, I'm just going to swap this around. You can see my presentation with any luck. Can I get a thumbs up from people if that's making sense? Yep, awesome, great. Okay. So, as Kitty mentioned, um, yeah, we're hoping to go through some of the questions we're getting around the insurance cover under the national program today. Um, obviously, we've done a lot of work over the first few weeks of our um, isolation about how we can help clubs work through this, continue to work with your members and provide a service for your members. So we did a lot of work early on, um, probably seems like years ago, but um, it was probably only a few weeks ago around what we can do to help you out. So we're going to go, I'll go over a bit, cover for the home training, um, what the clubs are covered for, what coaches are covered for, just a little bit around risk management essentials during this time. And then um, we've put together some FAQs, which I think will be really relevant, hopefully answer a lot of the questions that you might have that we've been getting in the team. So remote training. A couple of weeks ago, um, we worked very hard with GA to set up um, the fact sheet that came out and then was updated on the 26th of March. What we agreed with the insurers at the time was that um, at-home activities would be allowed and they included um, stretching, flexibility, strength and conditioning and basic gymnastics skills. We also included at that point in time, which has since effectively been revoked by the government because the outdoor training is now no longer. But I've left it in this presentation because I think as we start to unravel our isolation, um, we may be allowed back here. So once the government regulations come in to allow us to go back to potentially outdoor training, if that happens, it would include a little bit more in that um, you know, maybe some slightly more gymnastic skills that you might be able to do outside. I don't know, and no one knows whether um, sporting centres, i.e. gymnastic studios and things like that, will be open 
around the same time as outdoor training or not. So we'll just have to wait and see. We're really working through this together as we go through and trying to work out the best ways for you all to maintain your membership base and keep relevant for your members. So this Sarah, is all the sorry. information that was in the fact sheet. Yes. Sarah, sorry, can I just interrupt for a second? Sorry. I think everyone's having the same issue as I am, that the slide is sort of cut in half and there's, I think, is, is everyone not seeing? Give me a thumbs up if everyone, if the slide's okay for people, but I don't, people are only seeing, oh, yeah, it, only seeing half the slide. What about that? Hold on, I'll give it a second. Yeah, that's, oh, that was better just before. Not that. We were okay. seeing like the full slide and then the next slide. The next no, slide. That's... Has that changed? Did it change the settings over? It's only one slide, but we're not getting the full slide and it looks like about three quarters of it now. Okay, sorry. Let's just have a little look. Before, I think we were getting so your whole changed. screen with the current slide and the next one up in the top and corner. The next slide. Yeah, okay. So normally when I swap that over, um, I'm not sure why it's doing that. Is everyone having the same issue? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When you, when you flip through, it, it was okay. When when I first asked the question. Let's go page up. Let's hold on. Let me see. No. Can you see? No. You're only getting half the slide. We're sort of now getting the middle mm. bit of it. It's like it's too big for the screen. That's really mm. strange. Uh, sorry. You've, and I'm definitely not the most technical. What I might do, I might pop you over there. That's better. What can you see now? Better. Yep. Is that better? Yep. Yep. Can you see the whole thing? Okay. Yes. Okay, sorry to interrupt, okay. but carry on. No, 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 not at all. Sorry, thanks for letting me know. And I couldn't see the chats until I changed my thing. So sorry. Okay. That's right. Right. Okay. Technical issue. <laughs> we'll continue. Um, so, and feel free, like I know we, we've got limited time, so questions, I'll check the chats at the end for questions. The remote training requirements that we set up um, in that fact sheet were, we tried to make it as clear as we could. Um, so the program, anything that you're doing online or at home must be coach led um, between the coach and the athlete or a coach developed program. Um, the, obviously, it must be a tech member for, linked to an affiliated club running anything that's done online or at home. What really needs to be online. Athletes must have enough space um, in all the gymnastics-based exercises. At least one hand and one foot must be in contact with the ground. So we, we, our insurers have not agreed on any kind of aerial work or anything like that. However, they have made some concessions around some strength and conditioning and flexibility stretching exercises. So that was on the discussions that we'd had with GA about what, you know, what you can actually do um, within those exercises without it being too dangerous, I suppose. So the insurers originally were like, you know, we don't want people jumping around and, you know, flying through the air at home. But um, we understand that there are some things that you might need to do that where you might not always have um, one hand or foot on the ground. But the idea being that we're not doing aerial work or anything like that. The coach must coach within their accreditation levels, as, as always. And obviously the athlete should only be doing what they can perform within their ability level. So, you know, all the normal risk management things that you would expect. Um, there are just a few little tighter requirements around it. There's a few other things that we've put into that fact sheet. Again, I've included them here for today simply because I do think that as this um, isolation starts to unravel, outdoor training will probably come back before sporting centres. I don't know. I'm, I don't have a crystal ball. but So I've left them in there that if we do, if the governments were to say, next week that you can go back to small group training outside and you had clubs or coaches that wanted to somehow incorporate that, then 
if they were to do that, they would need to undertake a risk assessment of the environment and make sure it's safe. Um, athletes and coaches, you know, don't use outdoor equipment at the moment and um, any equipment that's going to be used needs to be for outdoor use only. So nothing needs, can be taken out of the um, gym and then put, put in outside and used. Again, these points here, not relevant at the moment because we can't do any outdoor training more than um, two people. Okay, so I'm going to keep going because I think the most important part's gonna be the Q&A, or not the Q&A, the FAQs. What does a risk assessment look like in this, you know, when we're trying to work at home with um, potentially athletes at home? So all the participants are required to take a, a level of risk assessment themselves at home. Um, so they'll need to take in their own surroundings and undertake um, a check of what's around. The coaches must remind the participants to do this. So they must check that they have su sufficient space, check that there are no trip, slip, sharp objects, hot surfaces, you know, anything like that where they're about to get set up. Ensure there's sufficient lighting. Um, we've had some come through and I don't know why, but people seem to like to do things in the dark. So um, make sure lights are on, they can see what they're doing. Ensure that your camera or your screen or other appliances are um, not in a precarious position where they could potentially fall on you or cause an issue. Um, sometimes when people are trying to set up cameras so that they can be seen, it, um, it causes a trip hazard in the end. Remember, obviously, back to more normal risk management, um, medical advice. And this might come into play a little bit more if we've had athletes who potentially haven't been training for a little while as a result of um, maybe clubs being shut down. So, you know, as people tend to get back to training, if they have been out, they tend to have injuries. You guys would know more than me, but we do tend to see a, a spike in injuries more so if people have had a break. So I suppose just making sure that they're very careful about the levels that they are working on. Um, children who, and vast majority of our athletes in, in gymnastics, they require adult supervision um, whilst they're doing any online training and ensure that all household members are aware of the training and avoid entering the space whilst, um, whilst it's going on. So they're the general kind of overview. Now I wanted to get into the frequently asked questions that we've been getting and hopefully this, if you have any questions, this might answer some of the things that you have in your mind. First of all, I'll go through what we get. Can siblings and friends join in online training? No, they can't. Only registered members. So anyone who's a little, you know, well, generally we're not having friends over, but uh, we've had queries around siblings and things like that. So no, they wouldn't be covered under the national program, whether they choose to join in or not, but don't expect the national program to, you know, cover their personal accident or things like that. If a staff, are staff members permitted um, in the gym at this time, i.e. to do cleaning, maintenance, admin? Yes. You are allowed to. We consider that to be your essential service. So you can go in and do your admin or do your cleaning. You must adhere to social distancing rules. Um, the overarching thing about everything that we're doing here is you must follow government guidelines. Uh, the policy, all the insurance policies require that. So that's the first thing that you have to consider when you want to do anything. Am I breaching any of the government restrictions? If that's not the case, then we can have a talk about whether we can make it work. So can I train one-on-one -on -one at the club? No. Sporting venues are shut, so, and that's gymnastics. We consider all gymnastics clubs to be a sporting venue. Um, so even though you might be still within the two-person rule, it's a government regulation that sporting um, venues are shut, so no. The difference being between that question and the one above where we're saying, yes, you can go in and you can maintain your premises, so do admin or clean, is that we, that's your, we consider that an essential service, whereas um, training an athlete is not considered an essential service at this point. Can we record training videos at the club with an athlete? No, 
same again, same issue. It's not considered an essential service. The sporting club should be shut. So um, unfortunately, we can't do that at the moment. Can I train one-on-one -on -one at an athlete's home? So this is obviously a coach asking this question, no. So it comes back to the whole, no, you can't have non-essential visits to houses at the moment. If an athlete or coach takes equipment out of the gym, is it covered under the National Risk Protection Program? No, unfortunately not. So neither the athlete, coach or equipment is covered if it leaves the gym. So the idea being that the equipment is designed to be where it's designed to be and it's um, being risk managed to be in that place. So no, it can't be moved out, taken somewhere else and used. Can I do one-on-one -on -one training in a privately hired hall or gym? No, same. I feel like I'm saying no to everything, but we, um, there are some yeses, but no, we can't. And it's not us. This is all back to really government regulations. Um, the, again, it's a non-essential service and it's um, not designed to go to outsourced locations where the risk management protocols haven't been put in place. If staff are permitted in the gym in this time, oh yeah, sorry, I've already gone through that one. Can athletes join online programs from clubs they are not registered to? From the insurance point of view, yes. We, there's no issue from an insurance point of view. The, um, the triggers for the insurance are that it's run by a tech member and that the, the person participating is an affiliated member of a club is a member of an affiliated club. So from an insurance point of view, that's fine. Um, we won't get involved in how clubs do that, but that's from our point of view, that's okay. Can clubs take training outdoors? And I've got a little asterisk here because this is the one that's changed since the last fact sheet was put out. Um, not at the moment, but I think that will change soon. Well, who knows, but not at the moment. So um, when and if that does change again, then the information that I provided earlier, and we'll, we'll advise that if that changes. And will the program cover me for training other sports and activities online? No, we definitely not. So if you're doing anything else other than um, gymnastics-based skills and gymnastics-related information, then you probably need to talk to us or talk to someone, your state maybe, but definitely only gymnastics. That's the main questions we have been getting. I hope that kind of covers off a lot of what your, your queries are. Um, the last page here, I just wanted to give you information around who we are and where you can find us and lots of information. So Marsh, where where the live just broken the world. So we have an entire website on or an entire part of our website with resources around this that will help small enterprises, medium-sized enterprises, and large enterprises through this. So um, there's a link through our website to get to our pandemic risk hub, which has articles and lots of things. So it's available. I know you've probably all been bombarded with information, but if you are looking for more support around, you know, there's things around work. If you've got staff working from home, if you've got, there's um, articles on there about, you know, risk managing, things like that. There's some really good, it's the one place where we've put all the information. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can email me and I'll send you the link. Otherwise, we'll have it on our website. Claims process for all claims, personal accident claims, liability claims is as per normal. We're all working um, from home, but we're all still working our normal hours. Our insurers are all still working their, their normal hours, or we get from home as well. So rest assured the processes for everything are still normal. If you were or any of your members needed to make a personal accident claim, you would do it through going to the Marsh Advantage Gymnastics website, which is the web address at the bottom, and following the links for how to make a claim on that website. That takes you through the process. Another good way to stay on top of every lots of articles and everything is following us on LinkedIn. And then obviously our team is here, um, you know, normal business hours on our number and on our email at all times. 
So I'm not sure how I'm going for time. I've probably taken up all my time. But that's Sarah, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you, Sarah. That's fantastic and some really um, practical examples. And I think you, you've certainly answered a lot of the questions that had come through prior. I don't know if you can see the chat, but there's been a couple of actually really good and relevant questions come through on the chat. So putting you on the yeah. spot a little bit now to um, see if you... Yep, I'm just looking through the chat now. Okay. No, no, so, no, that's okay. So one of them... Um, which okay, so I'm just looking through the questions now. So, sorry. So, does it really? So, I'm up to the point where does it really say no feet or overhead activities in the air? Okay. So, so one of the questions was. Sorry, you're cutting out on me a little bit. Sorry, I can't. Okay, I can't hear you, Kitty, if you're talking. No, I stopped talking because I thought you were. So maybe if, if I can Sorry, just sorry. No, that's all right. I think we've got a bit of delay. Maybe if I can identify some questions to put you on the spot to answer. Um, sure. Yes, so definitely. There, there's one which I thought was a good one. What if the online program is from overseas? Uh, would athletes here be covered to use that, uh, an overseas online program? Yes. So, again, I'd probably put that back to as long as it was an accredited program from another insured, you know, we're not just following random gymnastics. Um, so, from a personal injury point of view, um, I would suggest that it'd have to be approved by a state or GA first, because generally the national program will cover our affiliated clubs and our tech members to, to um, do the training and then our members are insured for their injuries as a result of that. We can extend it, but it would need to be an, agree, an agreement from a state or GA to say, yep, we're happy with certain you know, there are certain training things online that we're comfortable with and then there's no reason why we couldn't include that. But I would say at this stage, unless it's one of our coaches or one of our approved um, affiliated clubs running the program, then no, we'd need to get some kind of approval for it. Okay, so maybe why don't we take that offline and then we, we acknowledge that or address that yeah. in the... In the so, yeah. so what we've done for some of our other sports just on that, if is the national body or states have said, hey, we're comfortable with a whole bunch of things and the, here's the links. Um, and then if you want to share that with your clubs and your members and we just get that approved with the insurer and then um, we're okay with that. But rather than just going ad hoc around anything in the world, because we just have no idea as to whether it's, you know, uh, training that's actually, you know, we're not, we're not gymnastics people, we don't know. So as long as we get the okay that it's relevant and it's um, applicable, then it will get approved. Okay. Um, I just constantly, there's, there's a lot of really to, good questions yeah, see if, through, so we're, we're not going to deal with them all um, today. Maybe just, I think, one that might be relevant for everyone know. is... Um, for clubs who have, actually, Brad, this might be one. Well, actually, no. Look, I think, I think it's probably best if we leave all the questions for the FAQs. So someone did ask, can we record? Um, is this sorry? Is this PowerPoint available? Yes, we'll be putting this on online, and we'll also be adding in the answers to all the yep. FAQs. Um, one. Brad's online also. Brad's our general manager of, of club support and reactivation. So one question, Brad, that came through that I think might be relevant to everybody just for our final question today. The clubs who have closed operations and stood down staff, can these stood down coaches still run on online training? Technically, they're no longer with an affiliated club, yet they are current tech members. I think that, that's probably a very relevant one, if you can address that. Yeah, I think this is a really interesting mm. um, interesting question if the the coach even though they've been stood down um are still 
offering services to the affiliated club members within the club they've been stood down from, and maybe those services are free of charge. Um, so they're still working, they're still linked to the affiliated club in some way, uh, and they're still current technical members, obviously, then yes, they would be covered. If they're then going out as their own business, as a sole trader, um, and providing fee-for-service products to um, any person, uh, then no, they wouldn't be covered under the National Risk Protection Program. Hopefully that cleared that up, um, that question. There's been a lot of other questions um, come through about sort of employees within the club environment. That seems to be the main theme for questions. So we'll address all of those. We'll work through all of them with Sarah. Um, we'll try and get some more information on the uh, overseas or international programs. I think that's that's an interesting one, how we how we manage that and where that approval mechanism comes comes into play, if it's sort of before or after the fact. It's gonna be hard for us to have visibility over all the online programs that people are accessing because there's so many around at the moment. So um, we'll work through with you offline, Sarah, on that and include that in the in the FAQs. Um, yeah, definitely. Okay, so sorry, thank you for sending through questions on the chat. Uh, we haven't got time to deal with them now, but we absolutely will. And within 24 hours, we'll have them all, or hopefully sooner, um, putting everyone under pressure there. Um, we will get responses to all those FAQs and along with Sarah's PowerPoint presentation, we'll put them up online on the website. Uh, we'll also address them in my weekly email that I send to you all on um, usually late Friday afternoon or, or Saturday morning. So just as for last week, any other questions, please email them through to club support at gymnastics.org.au. If you have any ideas or burning topics that you that will really help you, as I said last week, these series are to help you. It's, it's not to do it for the sake of it. So we want to make sure that they're relevant and that they're useful and they're pragmatic. So please, if there's any burning issues out there that you really need some help on, please let us know and we'll schedule them into our webinar series. So Sarah, thank you very much for your time today. I um, re We really appreciate it and for all your ongoing work. And I think uh, Marsh was one of the first people that, that we called when all this started to work out where we stood to make sure that we could support our clubs to still maintain some sort of activity. So thank you, Sarah, for all your and, and Marsh's help over the last month as we've been, as we've been navigating this. Um, thank you, everyone. Nice to see all your faces, some familiar faces from last week. Um, yeah. And have a good week. And we'll speak to you all next Wednesday. Bye.